Hello everyone, my name is Zojin Zhang. Today I will talk about our weighting the mystery of API evolution in deep learning frameworks. A case study of TensorFlow 2. API libraries play an important role in efficiently writing programs to provide simple, powerful, robust APIs. API developers continually evolve their APIs. Researchers have investigated the API evolution of various domains such as Java and web APIs. Currently, deep learning has made the major breakthroughs in many fields, such as natural language processing, computer vision, and software engineering. However, API evolution in deep learning frameworks has not been investigated. To fill the gap, we conduct a case study on TensorFlow 2, which is because TensorFlow is the most popular deep learning framework on GitHub, and TensorFlow 2 is a major leap from the TensorFlow 1. Prior studies have three limitations. First, their research objectives are limited, such as not considering many versions of API evolution and focusing on a specific category of API chains. Second, they omitted some API chains, such as not considering code changes with the same API signatures or only extracting part of APIs. Third, they ignored the reasons for API evolution. To alleviate the above limitations, we propose to map API chains based on API documentation of TensorFlow 2 because it contains rich information and can help us analyze the reasons for API chains. Given its above background, we want to answer two research questions. The first research question, how do API chains evolve on, on TensorFlow 2? The second research question, what are reasons for API evolution on TensorFlow 2? It's the methodology. The first is to map API chains. There are two adjacent versions of BI libraries. We first filled out API pairs with the same declarations to extract a modification of descriptions, parameter method, and return value. Then we filled out API pairs with the same API for qualified name to extract parameter addition, parameter removal, or parameter names modifications. Then we build out API paths with the same API name, which correspond to API move. Then we determine whether there exists API addition, API removal, and API names modification. The second is to map API chains. This TensorFlow you says modules to aggregate APIs with similar functions. Two authors work together to classify API modules into six functional categories. Third is to identify reasons for API chains. We first read API documentation to find reasons. If the description is not enough to analyze reasons, we localize the commit's message in documentation. Since the doc commit messages can mention issues or pull requests, we use the information to analyze reasons. If the information is not enough to analyze reasons, so we find the related questions on Stack Overflow or TensorFlow community. We use the cut sorting approach to make a reason categories for API reasons. There are two iterations. In the first iteration, we randomly select samples to author separately or note the reason for API changes with a short description. Then they discuss the disagreements for to an rich agreement. Then they work together to group our notations and give two types of information for each group, category, and corresponding definition. In the second iteration, they make reason categories for remaining API chains. It's the result. We mine 6,329 API chains. The table shows the total number of API chains increases as the version updates. The number of API addition increases. The number of API removals decreases. And the number of other types of API chains fluctuates as the version updates. And the table shows model-related, data processing-related, and framework-related APIs are constantly evolved in all versions so called for 21%, 12%, and 63% respectively. Distributed commuting-related, utility-related, and deployment-related API chains so called for less than 4, 5%. 
for the second research question. The table shows the efficiency and compatibility account for a large portion, about 54%. Convenience and robustness only account for less than 1%. Other reasons account for 44%. The efficiency means API chains are for accelerating program runtime or saving resources. For example, API developers integrated many APIs of NumPy into TensorFlow as TensorFlow NumPy. Convenience means API chains are for helping programs analyze, configure, or debug programs. For example, API developers add a trace class to show a timeline of durations of TensorFlow operations or functions. Robustness means API chains are for handling various run input or negative work circumstances. For example, API developers add the backup and restore class to make models restored to a previous checkpoint from interruptions. The powerful needs means API chains are for enriching APIs with new functionalities to meet the different needs of developing programs. For example, API developers added the LAN API to get less of a data set into the flow. The expandability means API chains are for making extensions based on the original API code instead of writing APIs from scratch. For example, API developers add group parameters in convolution API to support group convolutions. The compatibility means API chains are for supporting different platforms, systems, devices, and the API versions. For example, when API developers add LAN API into TF Pond Tata module. They also add the API into TF Pond compared Pond V1 Pond Data module. The completeness means API chains are for supplementing missing or important information. For example, API developers add the description for optional parameter to supplement the information of specific values. The consensus means API chains for removing redundant or useless information or modified layers information. For example, API developers replaced the curves with the TF bond curves module to simplify the complex data code. The correctness means API chains are for fixing errors, modifying unreasonable API information, or updating obsolete information. For example, API developers updated the parameter data type to correct outdated API information. The friendliness means API chains are for programs to understand better, remember, and use the APIs by adding auxiliary information. For example, API developers add code examples for APIs. Then we give the discussion. We first make a comparison with non-deep learning frameworks. For example, for breaking chains, which break backward, backward API com compatibility, it will cost 28% in Java libraries, and it costs 12% on TensorFlow 2. Previous studies did not consider two reasons for API chains, such as convenience and compatibility. TensorFlow 2 pays more attention to efficiency than non deep learning framework projects, especially in accelerating numerical computing and distributed computing. Then we give implications. We find the advantages and the improvements of TensorFlow 2, such as friendly debugging, accelerating program runtime, and providing high-level APIs. For researchers, we, they could generate data type information for parameter description, and they could recommend code examples to developers. For API developers, they could reduce the dependency on curves and supplement the API version in API documentation for each API. Thank you, and welcome any question. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to this session on API development. My name is Carolyn Seaman. Um, I'm from Baltimore in the US, and I am the session chair for this session. And I have with me Zhe Jun, who was the presenter that you just heard, and she is ready to take your questions. So uh, please think about what questions you have for her and put them in the chat. And to get us started, um, I have one, if you don't mind, uh, that I'd like to ask. Um, I was wondering, do you think that other, other deep learning frameworks other than TensorFlow 2 would have similar patterns of API evolution? Or do you think that TensorFlow 2 might be unique and that other deep learning networks would, be, would have different patterns? 
Yes, good uh, question. Yes, um, I think uh, um, uh, all the deep learning frameworks, they all have uh, common patterns such as uh, uh, efficiency and uh, the compatibility and uh, so on. Uh, as, as for the different uh, patterns, uh, it may be for the uh, usage patterns or high level APIs, they may be different. And the low level APIs, it may be, uh, maybe we should uh, investigate them to understand uh, the different patterns. But uh, as for now, I can just answer the specific different patterns because in the future work, we'll investigate uh, the different patterns uh, across many deep learning frameworks. It's an interesting question. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll give people a few more minutes. In the meantime, I have one more question. Um, and, it, and it is about differences uh, from other frameworks. So why do you think uh, TensorFlow 2 and, and other deep learning frameworks that might be similar, why do you think it's different from um, other non-deep learning frameworks? Because you found some differences, some different ways that TensorFlow 2 is different. Why do you think uh, it's different in those ways? Okay. It's a good question. <laughs> Why they are different? It's uh, difficult to answer. Um, as for users of deep learning frameworks, uh, they have their preference for deep learning frameworks. Uh, when they have different preference for deep learning frameworks, it, it may be some uh, different uh, patterns. Because they when they choose uh, deep, deep learning frameworks, they have their own motivation for some, uh, for example, the PyTouch, uh, the users is increasingly more and more uh, because many people think it, uh, it's uh, easy of use. Uh, TensorFlow, it's, um, it's also good, but uh, it uh, may be a little for initial developers to use and, uh, but uh, but uh, it, uh, it, it's uh, distributed computing. It's, um, it's super weird to pay touch and uh, it, uh, more, uh, more, uh, it has uh, more develop developers to support the deep learning frameworks and uh, the distributed computing and uh, the mobile development, uh, the TensorFlow, it's all support. Uh, so it a very, uh, very comprehensive. It support uh, many, many users, but the PyTouch maybe has some limitations in, um, in users. Uh, as for, I understand uh, it may be some researchers may uh, may use them always, but uh, TensorFlow may be used in database. Um, and uh, yeah. Easy of use of being PyTouch and, uh, and the more comprehensive in terms of. Thank you. All right. Um, we don't have any questions in the chat. Um, so I think maybe our audience is North American and they're just waking up <laughs> okay. and they're too sleepy to put in their questions. Um, so I think we'll stop the Q&A now. Um, actually, there's no way to actually stop it in Clouder, so you and I can just hit the button that says leave room, and, uh, and we'll leave the room, and everybody can have a bit of a break before the next, uh, the next talk, okay? Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the concert, conference. Yeah. So I can leave the room. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>